I run a business and in my business, I have a ton of repetitive tasks. But over the past few years, I've automated the most annoying ones with keyboard macros. So in this video, I'll build a macro to completely automate this workflow. At the moment, it looks like this. I have to open a bunch of specific websites, close certain apps, and move files around, which is a huge waste of time. Manually, I would spend over an hour a week on this, but after this video, it will take seconds instead of hours. I'm Mo, I help professionals and entrepreneurs save time with automation. Let's start building the macro. Okay, so I'm here in Keyboard Maestro, which is the app that we'll use to create this macro. And let's start by pressing the plus button down here to make a new macro. And I'll call this uh, setup for a client call. And the first thing we can do is come down to this plus button to add a new action. And I think to start this macro, we can add an action to display text. So I'll double click the display text action and let's say display text large. And here I'll just put a message to let us know that the macro is going to start. So we can say um, setting up for client call exclamation mark. And now if I run this macro, you can see it runs the one action below, which displays a message that says setting up for client call. So now whenever we run the macro, it will display a message at the beginning, letting us know that the actions will continue to run. Now, the first thing I like to do when setting up for client calls is to quit certain applications. So I'm going to search for the quit action and I'll say quit a specific application. And here let's quit. Um, I like to quit my WhatsApp and my mail. So mail, and let's also quit um, signal. So basically all messaging apps um, we can quit so that there are no distractions when I'm on a call with clients. And then I also like to open certain applications to get ready for my call. So I'll double click on the action that says activate a specific application. And I'll bring this to the bottom of the macro. And here I always need to activate Keyboard Maestro and I'll duplicate this action. And I also need to activate Zoom because that's where I take my calls. So already you can see in just a couple minutes, we've created a macro that when I run it will uh, display that text. It will quit a bunch of these apps below. It will activate Keyboard Maestro and it will activate Zoom, which came up on my other monitor. You can also download this completed macro in the description of this video if you want to play around with it yourself. But let's move on to the next step. Okay, at this point, the next thing I need to do to get set up for my client calls is to remove all of the items from my downloads folder and put them into some temporary storage. So often I'll share my screen with clients or I need to download things or send them things. And I don't like to have my downloads folder cluttered up with a bunch of random files. So let's fix that. I'm going to go to the desktop and create a new folder and let's just call this temporary files. And this will be the place that we set up the macro to move all of the files from the downloads folder into. So let's come back to Keyboard Maestro and the way we'll do that is with the for each action. So I'm gonna search for each and double click this action right here. And now I'm going to select a folder content selection. So basically what this will do is it will let us search through each of the files in a certain folder. And in this case, the folder we want is the downloads folder. And then we can do something with those files by adding actions below. And the thing that we want to do to each of those files is move them. So I'm going to search for the move a file action. I'll double click it to add it and I'll put this inside of the for each action. And let's select the destination folder first. So we know the destination that we want to move each of the files in the downloads folder to is this new folder that we just created, the temporary files folder. So I'll press open. You can see that gets added here. And then the thing that we want to move 
is this file that we just created. So this is what's called a variable. I have an entire tutorial about variables if you want to learn more about them. But the way that you refer to a variable in a text field, you can see the T here, is by typing out a interesting set of characters like this, which is variable percent, the name of the variable, and then percent signs at the beginning and end. So we're basically saying move each file from the downloads folder to our new temporary desktop folder. So let's get the downloads folder open and maybe I'll bring Keyboard Maestro to the right side so that we can see this in action. And I'll close out this window here. And I will right click on the for each action and I will press try. So you can see as I press try, all the files from the downloads folder disappeared. And let's check to make sure that they appear in the right place. And it looks like they did. So they jumped from the downloads folder to the temporary files folder in our desktop. So I'll just put them back for now. And by the way, if you want me to help you make custom macros like this to save you over 100 hours a year, I run a program called the Automation Accelerator. It's super personalized to help you save as much time as possible. And you can book a free coaching call with me using the top link in the description below to see if you'd be a good fit. Okay, at this point, the next thing that I need to do to get set up for my client calls is to make sure that my mic is plugged in. So sometimes I forget to plug in my microphone and it's super annoying. So let's fix that with some more actions inside of Keyboard Maestro. So I'm going to search for the if condition. So if then else, I'll double click this to add this action to the macro. And at this point, we wanna check if the microphone is plugged in. And if it's not, we want some sort of alert to make sure that I know it's not plugged in. So I'll come here and I'll press the plus button to add a condition to check. Now my microphone plugs in via USB. So I'll press USB device condition. And here we can check whether the USB device, which is my microphone, exists. And actually I'm going to unplug the mic and plug it back in. And that should add the name of it right here. So I'm gonna be silent for a second, plugged it back in. You can see the name of the microphone appeared here. And I didn't even have to type it in manually. So now we have our condition. So if the uh, USB device, AKA the microphone exists, then we know it's plugged in. But actually we wanna check if it does not exist. If it does not exist, we know it's not plugged in. And let's add an action to uh, display text. And I'll double click this, display text. And maybe we can have it display text in a window and say something like, Mike is not plugged in. So this is very bold and clear. Uh, let's test this, I'll press try. You can see it does nothing since my microphone is plugged in. And let me unplug it and try the action. Here you can see that when I tried the action while the mic was not plugged in, this window popped up on screen, letting me know that the mic is not plugged in. So this is a great warning when I'm about to get on a call. And I always know that my microphone is plugged in. All right, at this point, the next thing that I need to do to get set up for my coaching calls is to bring the client folder with their custom macros to the top of the macro groups right here. And I actually have another macro built that does that, but I wanna run it from this one. So I'm going to add a new action, and this one is actually going to be an action called execute a subroutine. And here I can search for the action I want or the macro I want, which in this case is this one here, select coaching call macro group. And what this macro does when I run it, I'll right click and press try, is it pops up a list of all of my clients and I can search for one of them. So I'll search, I have an example client named just in time and you can see that causes 
his name to appear within the list. And now if I double click it, then on the left side, it brings that macro group to the top by renaming it. It gets rid of the Z in front of the name which brings it up alphabetically to this point here, and it will contain all of the macros for that individual. So we can run that other macro that does that series of steps I just described. And we also wanna save the result to a variable called uh, something like client name. So the way that this subroutine works is that it will return the name of the client and basically what that does is it will save the name just in time to a variable called client name once this action runs. So that way, later in the macro, we can refer to this variable because we'll want to use it to do more things with this specific client. But we'll get to that in a second. For now, the next step that I need to do, and by the way, this is a lot, but it's actually a simplified version of a real macro that I use to get ready for my coaching call. There's a lot of steps I'm skipping, for the sake of this video, you can get the point that there's a lot of powerful things you can do to automate even these simple workflows of getting ready for a call on Zoom. But the next step that I like to do is I have to bring a couple websites to the front. So um, I have this example folder here on Google Drive, and I always want to open this spreadsheet whenever I meet with clients so that I can mark when I've met with them. So I just have a couple example rows that I came up with here. And then I have another um, file as well, which is a Google Doc specific to each client. So it will have their name at the start of it. And then just some notes for them in particular that I will want open during the call. So maybe let's start with the easy one, which is to open this general spreadsheet. And let's come back to Keyboard Maestro and we're going to actually add a favorite action. So this is a custom set of actions that I've created. Again, you'll be able to download it in the description below, but let's see which one it is. It is the action here, which says open URL in Brave, if not already open. So this looks really complicated and scary. Basically what this does though, is we can paste in our URL here and it will open that website if it's not open already. So let's close out these websites here and I'll select these two actions and try them. And you can see it brings that spreadsheet to the front. It opens that URL. But let's run these actions again, considering that the website is already open. So I'll press try and you can see it does nothing. So essentially what these two actions do is they will open the URL only if it is not already open within the browser. So this way we don't get duplicate tabs. If I already have this spreadsheet open, it won't open it again. It will only open it if it's not open to begin with. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. We're just opening this URL if it is not already open. But what's a little bit more difficult is to open the specific uh, document depending on the client name. So we thankfully saved the name of the client before to a variable, and I'll just call this local client name here. So we have the name of the client from this action, which in this case is just in time. And that's very helpful to be able to open this because the document contains the client's name as well. And I usually have my client documents bookmarked and I'm gonna do a little cheating and just paste in some actions to do this for us. Basically, I have another macro that saves all of my bookmarks to a variable, and then we can just search through that uh, variable with the client name from before, and then set that uh, URL that's associated with the client name, which would be this uh, URL in this case, saves it to a variable, and then does the same set of actions before, to open that variable or open that URL if it does not exist already. So I know that's a little hand wavy, but I think it's a bit too complex to get into in this uh, video. However, we have a pretty serious set of actions at this point that saves a lot of time. So let's go ahead and run it. I'm gonna close out some of these files here 
And in fact, I will close out Keyboard Maestro as well. Um, actually, we should set a hotkey for this macro so that we can run it when Keyboard Maestro is closed. So I just added a test hotkey of Command Option Control S. But now let's close Keyboard Maestro and I will press that hotkey. So you can see it prompts us after opening Keyboard Maestro to select a client. So I will select just in time. It opens the Google document specific to that client as well as the general spreadsheet for all of my clients. Uh, it also, again, moved all the files from the downloads folder to the temporary files uh, storage on my desktop. So I think you can see how building a macro like this with several different actions can save a lot of time every week, especially since I have to meet with clients multiple times a week. It would be a complete pain to have to do this manually every single time. And then I actually have a similar macro for when I finish my calls that does the opposite. So it brings all of these folders back from the temporary file storage to the downloads folder. It brings the coaching folder back down to the bottom and it reopens some apps and so on. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like my six hour course about building macros in Keyboard Maestro, which you can view for free right here. Thanks for watching.